Christ au principal et qui se roule à Things are turning around for my favor. Things are turning around for my favor. They are turning around for my favor. Shout it's a new season. Say Lord, I thank you for my new season. Thank you for my new season. Say bye bye. Season of pain. Bye bye. Season of sickness and disease bye bye season of discouragement say i welcome you season of healing breakthrough favor and prosperity say i welcome you in my life i welcome you in my marriage i welcome you in my family i welcome you in my in my career say i welcome you my new season say lord thank you that you have made this season possible for me many did not wake up to see this season many are not alive to see this season but i am breathing i am alive i am kicking i am blessed i am prosperous the enemy thought that he will keep me down thought that he will keep me oppressed but i have risen i am shining i am smiling i am joyful i am happy for the lord is on my side holy spirit is on my side shout thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus amen Yes, I thank God for each and every one of you. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Yes, indeed it's a new season. Who can smell it? Who can perceive it? Who can behold it? Huh? There is a change in the atmosphere. There is a change in the heavenly places. Huh? There's a change for our good. You know, change can be in two dimensions change can either be negative or it can be positive but the one that i smell it's a very positive change it's a good change hallelujah remember everything that take place physically have taken place spiritually first when they say a season is changing you must know that a season change first in the spiritual realm when we say it's a it's a it's a season of spring you know spring symbolizes uh, blossoming it symbolizes fruitfulness hallelujah not only physically but also spiritually in our lives as children of god we are not only celebrating spring physically but we are also celebrating spring spiritually amen a season of a season of winter has come to an end in our life you know some people go through the winter of the soul they go through the winter of the spirit Amen. If you can go through the winter of the soul and you can go through the winter of the spirit, then surely you can also go through the spring in your spirit. Amen. So let there be fruitfulness over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I say let there be fruitfulness over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, let winter come to an end over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May your life blossom in the name of Jesus Christ. May your business blossom in the name of Jesus Christ. May your career blossom in the name of Jesus Christ. May they be good fruit over your life in the name of Jesus. Over your children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, we have been dealing with, uh, you remember, firstly we dealt with uh, dealing with tribulation. Dealing with tribulation, you still remember? And we spoke about dealing with the storms last week. Dealing with the storms. Tribulation and storms. Amen. Last week we spoke that storms, Bazalwane, are supernatural although they manifest in the natural. That's what we said. We say storms are supernatural although they manifest in the natural. Meaning they are beyond human control. And also they, we said also that storms they come 
unaware or unannounced. They don't tell you that we are coming. They just come because they are supernatural. But we say it that we have master over the storms. Jesus, son of the living God, is a master over the storms. Jesus is the master over my storm and over your storm. We say storm, don't listen to any other voice. They don't respect any other voice. They don't obey any other voice. Storms only respect and obey the voice of their maker. Amen. That's why when Jesus Christ came, he said, peace be still. And there was peace and there was stillness. Because storms knew that it is not just anyone speaking. But they knew that the general maker of the heaven and universe is the one who is speaking right now. Amen. So storms only recognizes the voice of its maker, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the master over every storm that you will ever face in life. Amen. So if you run everywhere and you don't run to Jesus, storms are not going to come. That's why a lot of Christians, they deal with storms in a wrong way. That's why storms, instead of subsiding, instead of calming down, instead of them being silent and being stilled, they increase, they amplify. Why? Because we handle them in the wrong way. Amen. So the only way to handle storms, Bazalwani, it's when we allow Jesus to speak stillness and quietness over the storms. Tell your neighbor, the only way to handle your storms, it's when you allow Jesus to speak stillness and peace over every storm that you face. So let's continue. Today, I want us to talk about turning hopeless situation around. Turning hopeless situation around. Turning hopeless situation around. Amen, Bazalwan. Turning what? Let's say it. Okay, personalize it. Turning my hopeless situation around. Let's say it. Say it today. I'm going to learn on how to turn any hopeless situation that I am facing, that I'm going to face around for my favor. Yes, because you are a child of God. You have been given power and authority over any situation. Amen. Over what? Any situation. Over all situation. You have been given power and authority. There is no situation, Bazalwani, that must open an open field over your life. There is no situation that must control a child of God. Every situation that has power to control a child of God, that child of God is in trouble, in a very serious trouble. Amen. Do you hear what I say? Any situation that can control a child of God, you must know that you are in danger. Amen. You are in danger more than that situation because you have been given power to control situation. Remember, God created us to master every situation. Huh? That's why he created me and you in his own image and likeness. He did not create the storms to be in his image and likeness. He did not create trouble in his own image and likeness. But he created me in his own image and likeness. And also, after God created me and you, he gave me and you power, dominion. He says, subdue, dominate, meaning rule over everything. Rule over everything. Rule over situation. Rule over circumstances. As a child of God, you must know that every time a situation is controlling you. You have given, you have given away, you have sold away your power, your rights, your inheritance as a child of God. You are living as a cockroach when God is expecting you to live like a lion. A cockroach is something that lives by senses. Hallelujah. But a lion is a king, is a ruler. No matter how small it is, an elephant knows that whenever a lion comes, I need to run away. Every, every animal, no matter how strong it can be, no matter how powerful it can be, 
But the minute they see a lion, they know that the king has come into a place. One time I said, what makes a lion Bazalwane powerful is not, is not their power. Because, you know, do you know that the lion's teeth are not so strong like the hyena, like the wild dogs? Do you know that the lion is not the fastest animal around? We've got the cheetah, we've got the jaguar. The lion Bazalwane is not the biggest animal around. We've got an elephant. A lion is not the tallest animal around. We've got the giraffe. But all the animals that I've mentioned, at the presence, at the presence, or at the appearance of a lion, they know that we need to run because a general has come into a place. What makes a lion rule is their mentality. They know who they are. Hallelujah. They know who they are. Amen. They know that we are born to, to be the kings of the jungle. To be the king of the forest. Hallelujah. So a child of God was created to rule. A child of God was created to overcome. We were created, Bazaloni, to sail over the storms. We were not created to be swallowed by the storms. We need to swim over the storms. We need to soar above the wings. Above the, uh, above the winds. Winds must not break us. But winds must enable us, must empower us to see another dimension in heavenly places. You know, we are, power than, we are more powerful than we think. We are more powerful. We are more strong than we know. Human beings are the most powerful creation in every creation that God has ever created. We are the most powerful ones. I said it one time that a human being, Bazalwane, has such a power that, you know, he can live one hour without air. He can live 80 days without food. He can live 40 days without water. But you cannot live one minute, one second without hope. You can't live without hope. Any child of God who is without hope is without help. Tell your neighbor, if you are without hope, you must know that you are without help. Yeah, in the midst of anything, hope must never die. Remember, your faith will not work without hope. The Bible says faith is the evidence of things. I can't hear you. Faith is the evidence of things. Yes. So, if you cannot hope for anything, your faith is as equal as useless. What gives, your, what gives power to faith is also not love, but your hope is important. Knowing that no matter how bad things are, I know that I'm coming out. I know that at the end of the day, I will win. Our general left us with wonderful legacy. He says, no matter how bad, no matter how long a, a, a lie can prevail, good will always prevail. Amen. No matter how down a child of God can be, no matter how long a child of God can be, no matter how out they can be, you must always know that they will always come out. They will always come out. The most dangerous thing for a child of God or for anyone is to laugh at anyone who is down, is to laugh at anyone who is out, is to laugh at anyone who has failed. Because failure is success turned upside down. Failure is what? Success turned upside down. My father normally says, he says, when you see me being weak, he says, don't be quick to criticize me. Don't be quick to give up on me. He says, watch how I behave and how I come out. Because one day you are going to face yours. One day you are going to face yours. I say storms comes to everyone. Storms, tribulation comes to everyone. They, 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 uh, tribulations and storms of life are not gender based. They are not racial based. They don't look at age. I told you about Mephibosheth. At the age of two, he was crippled. He was born being able to walk. But all of a sudden, a mistake of someone caused him to be crippled. He says when he enters the table of David, he says, what can a do do to a dog like me? Someone who was born to be a king. But all of a sudden, destiny changed the course of his life. He saw himself as a, as a dog. That is a hopeless situation. But in the midst of that hopeless situation, 
God in his favor made him to come and sit with the king. It is not over until God says it is over. Do you hear what I say, people of God? It is not yet over until God says it is over. You know so many times the devil whispered to me that it is finished with you. You are going nowhere. But the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, he will always say, which reports are you going to listen to? Huh? Which reports are you going to take? And I will not even go to the word. I will, I will laugh at the enemy. You've made a mistake. You know what kind of a product I am. You know that you cannot be messing up with me. You can challenge me. You can fight me. You can hit me with some few, few blows. But the battle does not belong to you. Victory does not belong to you. I say it in your record. There is nowhere where they say you are a champion. I've read from the Bible, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, there is nowhere where I've seen you win. I have seen you win rounds, but I've never seen you win the battle. In the life of those who trusted in you, who are watching this face right now, and I'm experiencing them, I have never saw you winning over them. I have seen you winning rounds, but not the battle. The 12th round always belongs to the Lord. The last round always belongs to the Lord. That's why the Bible in the book of Isaiah, he says he gives strength to those who are weary. Hallelujah. He renews their strength. He gives them strength of an eagle. When they are tired, when they are on the verge of giving up, sometimes you have given up. Have you seen? I think maybe Mr. Snails will know that. Pastor Snails will know that. Sometimes you try to work a thing. And then it does not work. Oh, look, it's a kamoy. I look it. Oh, some something. It does not work. And then when you're on the point of giving up and you say, I, let me give you the last shot. And then while you try to give you the last shot, it starts working. This is how it is with child of God. Satan wants us to give up. He wants us to give up on our faith. We will look at the word of God. I've went into the word of God. I've seen several hopeless situations. But in all those hopeless situations, I've also seen something. I have seen, I've learned from the people. I did not learn only from God's supernatural power in addressing those situations. But I've learned from those people who faced those situations, how they responded, how they cried out, and how they came out. Hallelujah, Basalwan. Do you hear what I say? They cried out. They sought for help. They went everywhere. But at the end, something wonderful happened. Something wonderful happened. And I, I know Jesus loves me. of Jesus Christ. May it touch your marriage today in the name of Jesus. May it touch your family today in the name of Jesus. May it touch your finances today in the name of Jesus. May it touch your children today in the name of Jesus. May it touch your loved ones today in the name of Jesus. May it touch this church and this ministry in the name of Jesus. I say may Jesus touch Rustin back in the name of Jesus. May he touch Northwest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go into the word of God quickly. Like I said, people of God, 
I went and looked into the Bible. You can go into the book of Mark 5. Okay, our proof text will be found in the book of Matthew, into the, in the book of Isaiah 38. We are going to look at King Ezekiah, Isaiah 38. This is, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, if you don't know. A year will not pass without me touching Ezekiah. Amen. I'm saying a favorite scripture. But you told us that David is your favorite character. Uh -uh. I say to my favorite scripture. Tell your neighbor, Ari, this is his, one of his favorite scriptures. Hey, I know you. I need to make myself clear. Right. Oh, chincha, chincha. Oh. Hmm? Amen. So, get Isaiah 38 and then at home also read Isaiah 37. Amen. You will see that the man of God was facing some hopeless situation there. Amen. It was something that happened in 37. It's something that happened without. He was being attacked by the Sen Sennacherib. Amen. He was being attacked by a, a mighty army. They were mighty on the outside. They were numerous on the outside. They were more without. Amen. Amen, Basalwan. So, but you check also that Bona, there were in few numbers. You know God is a God of number. Do you know that God is a God of number? But God is not the God of the multitude. God can use one to save many. Amen, Basalwan. God can do what? Save one. God can use one to save many. Amen. Yes. So, we, you can read that at, uh, at, at, at the comfort of your home. Isaiah 37 and then 38. Amen. So, I was saying that I looked at several examples in the Bible who faced hopeless situation. Amen. Number one, I saw a woman with the issue of blood. I spoke about, I spoke about that last week. Amen. Was it last week or a week before? A week before, right? Yes, in Mark 5, verses 25. That is another hopeless situation. The Bible says he suffered for many years this situation. Amen. And there was also a woman with the spirit of infirmity which is found in the book of Luke 13, verses, verses 11. The, the woman with the spirit of infirmity. Amen. So this woman, both this woman, Bazalwani, went through a lot, and they suffered many years. The woman with the spirit of infirmity suffered for 18 years. Amen. Amen. Not eight years, not eight months, but 18 years is like half of her life. Amen. She suffered this infirmity. Amen. And then there is also a man who was born blind. A man who was born blind for 30 years. Amen. In the book of John 9, verse 1. In the book of John 9, verse 1. And then the moon. Do you remember the man at the pool who was not able to walk? When Jesus Christ came, he says, I don't have anyone to put me in that pool. You remember, Basalwan, right? The Bible says he suffered that situation for how many years? 38 years. 38 years, right? And then it's found where? In the book of John 3, verse 5. It's found in the book of John 3, verse 5. And then also a crippled man in the book of Acts. A crippled man by the gates, by the beautiful gates. Amen. Yeah, now the Bible says he was crippled for 40 years. Crippled for 40 years. Amen. So that one, you find it in the book of Acts 3, verses 2. Amen, Basalwan. So all these people, Basalwan, look at the situation. None of them experienced this situation for five years. None of them experienced them for 10 years. All of them, Basalwani, what they went through was above, was over and above 10 years, 15 years. Amen. Imagine 30 years. 30 years is like half of your life. It's like you are on the verge of going home now. 38 years. But there is something that I love about these people. In the midst of all these years, they did not give up hope. Because you know why? You know why I say they did not give up hope? Meaning like the, 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 the man at the beautiful gate. And the man also who was at the pool. The Bible says they kept going. They kept, for 30, for 30 years and 38 years, they kept going to the gate. They kept going to the pool. Ah, some people could have given up after 10 years, after 5 years, after 20 years. But they kept going. They kept going. There was something on the inside of them that said, don't give up. One day when, I, when I, your time will come. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she went everywhere seeking for help. Meaning there was something inside of her that was saying there is solution somewhere. Your situation is not unto death. Don't give up. Although she made mistake. 
Although she, she lost everything, this is what takes place even in us when we seek for help. We lose. We don't only lose our resources. We don't only lose friendship. We lose quite a lot. We can even lose our dignity while seeking for solution. But the key in all of these people, Basalwan, is that hope must never die. No matter what takes place in your life, hope must never die. Say, my hope will never die. My hope will never die. Say anything else. But not my hope. Not my hope. Yeah. Remember, in hope there's your willpower to rise. In hope there's a willpower to come back again. In hope there's a willpower to be restored. Amen, Bazalwani. You can never kill anyone, Bazalwani, who has a strong willpower to live. Amen. No matter how sick they can be, anyone with the willpower to say, it's not yet my time, they will always bounce back. I have seen people who are strong, Ah, all of a sudden, we see, we hear that they, they are gone. I have seen people, Basalwan, who are very weak. We are thinking that it is over with them. But they always bounce back. Yes. This is what we call a stubborn faith. Stubborn faith will always produce stubborn hope. Huh? Stubborn faith will always produce what? Stubborn hope. And then all this stubborn faith and stubborn hope will always produce a stubborn Christian. Satan will know that this one is stubborn. He will not give up on his faith. He will not quit on coming to church. He will not quit serving. He will serve God whether he has teeth or he does not have teeth. He will serve God whether he has sickness or he does not have sickness. He will serve God whether I take away all his cars, all his houses. He will still serve God. Stubborn faith comes from stubborn hope. Amen, Basalwan. Stubborn hope comes from stubborn faith. Amen. Stubborn faith. So let's go to Ezekiel very quickly. Ezekiel chapter 8. Yeah. Oh, sorry, man of God. Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. Hey, Isaiah 38. 38. Sorry. Yes, hey, we are talking about Ezekiel. Ezekiel's hey. hey. <laughs> life extended. Hey. Say my life will be extended. The life of my loved ones will be extended. Say we are not going anywhere. Say you COVID-19 and your symptoms and your transport. We are not going anywhere. And me and my loved ones According to the word of God, according to the report of the word, our lives are extended. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I can't go now. We don't make declaration on our own human accord. We make declaration based on the word of God because we are product of the word. We are not product of the world, but we are product of the word. We have been born again. The Bible says we have not been born again of the incorruptible seed. The Bible, the, the Bible says we were being born again of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. Amen, Basalwan. So, whatever the word says about us, whatever the word says about us, it takes a final stance. Amen, Basalwan. If it is not in the word, then it cannot be in my life. But if it is in the word, then it is for, it is, it is for my life. Tell your neighbor, say, everything in the word is my inheritance. It's my blessing. Say, I claim my blessing today. Say, Satan will not steal my blessing. Say, this word was spoken for me. Yes, read verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah was sick. And Hezekiah was sick. In those days, Hezekiah was sick, yes. And near death. And near death. Highlight that one, okay? Quickly, go jump to 37. And then you read it from uh, 3. 37 verse 3. It's a very long story. Amen. It starts actually from 36. Isaiah 37. Yes. Verse okay, do this. You go to 36 and read from 4. And then after that, we, we are, we are, I will tell you to jump to it. Isaiah 36 verse 4. Yeah. Then, then the rush, the, the rapture came mm. said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, yeah. That says the great king, yeah. the king of Assyria. The great king. Ah, he was telling himself a lie. There is another great king. Okay, yes. 
What confidence is this in which you trust? What confidence? What is your confidence as a child of God? What is your confidence when you go through situation as a child of God? Amen, yes? That's fine. I say you speak of having plans and power for all, mm. but they are mere ways. Mm. Now in whom do you trust? In whom do you trust? Amen. In whom do you trust? Okay, let's jump there. 36 verses 3. 37 verses 3. Isaiah 37 verse 3. Yeah. And they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. Trouble, rebuke and blasphemy. Amen. So, do you see what this man was facing with? Do you see what he was facing with? After, this is when he was attacked. His army was attacked. Amen. He went through a lot. It was shame and disgrace. He had to speak to his people that please don't listen to this man. Amen. He says, why don't you speak in the language that you will understand? He said, why should you speak in the language that you will understand? You are not going to tell us what to, how to speak. Amen. Because you are nothing and your God is also nothing. He says, we are going to crush you. He says, they speak to the army. They speak to the army of Ezekiah. Go, hey, no, no. Nah. Don't allow this king to fool you. We are going to crush you. Because you are nothing. You can even see yourself in number. Oh, you are nothing. He says, you cannot stand against us. As a gear head to back home, don't listen to this fool. Because when you go through situation, it's important who you listen to. Because who you listen to will determine your confidence in life. Do you hear what I say? Whoever you listen to will determine what? Your confidence in life. And your confidence is the power that will see you through. Or it's a power that will make sure that you... You remain caged in your situation. Your confidence. Amen. Your confidence. They say, who are you trusting in? Who are you trusting in? Amen, Basalwan. Because I, one way or the other, you need to trust on something. Or you need to trust on someone. Amen, Basalwan. Because I said before, that life is spiritual. You always need to have spiritual backing. You see that people of the world, they've got their own spiritual backing. Bashapa Masab with their spiritual backing. Some people, their spiritual backing are powers of snake. Some people, spiritual backing are powers of gold. When are, what is your spiritual backing? Because your spiritual backing will determine your physical strength. Tell your neighbor, your spiritual backing determine your physical strength. Your spiritual confidence determines your physical confidence, determines your physical strength. Yes. Amen, Basalwan. So, who are you strong? That's why the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and where in the power of his might. Psalms 3, is it Psalms 3 verses 5 or Psalms 5 verses 3? It's Psalms 3 verses 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does the Bible say? Let God be your spiritual backing. Let God be your spiritual support. Let God be your spiritual strength. Because times are going to come. Trials are going to come. Tribulations are going to come. Either way, one way or the other. Amen, Basalwan. And remember I said it, that our challenges are not the same. Amen. Some their challenges are health-wise. Some their challenges are, are, are financial-wise. Amen, Basalwan. But we're all in need of some breakthrough in life. We're all in need of spiritual intervention in our lives. If we are not going to have any spiritual intervention, we are not going to have any physical solution. If we are not going to have any spiritual intervention we are not going to have what physical yeah, strength or power to overcome so read for us sir. thus says Hezekiah this day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy for the children have come to bed but there is no listen strength. to this he says the children have come to bed yes but there is no strength to Bring there, them is forth. No, there is no strength to bring forth the child. Huh? Do you know what can that do? It can kill both the mother and the, it can kill both the mother and the child. Or Mama Rebecca, am I telling the truth? It's true. Eh? If the mother does not have power to deliver, that's why they have what we call Caesar. Amen, Basalwan. Caesar is there to save both the mother and the child. The inability of a mother to, to, to bring the child here can affect both of them. Because the life of a mother, it's a, the life of a child is connected to the life of the mother. Amen, Basalwan. So now the man of God says, hey, what the, the, 
right now the situation that we are going through it's the same situation of a mother giving of a mother who's supposed to give birth to a child but it does not have power to give birth to that child meaning Ezekiel was saying we don't have strength to overcome this challenge we don't have power to overcome this challenge yes sir verse 4 mm. it may be that the Lord your God will hear the ways of the rapture rapture king yeah whom he whom his master the king of Assyria has sent to reproach the living God mm. and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God okay has you made. understand part one let's go to part two at 38 now as uh, Isaiah 38 yeah verse one uh, okay read it from two verse two yeah then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall Hezekiah did what okay read it from one for those who don't read their Bible or for those it's the first time that they hear this story Isaiah. because our Christianity is not the same it's true man of God amen so for 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 their sake let's read Isaiah 38 verse 1 yeah Ezekiel's life extended Ezekiel life extended yes in those days Pazarwani, please wake up wake up wake up I see some of you are sleeping spiritual and it's manifesting physically wake up wake up be attentive amen Pazarwani. don't you want me to be that pastor Facebook. Facebook. I'm going to point you with the finger. You remember, hey, that man of God, I love him. So please, don't want me to, I don't want to do this, so, amen. Yeah, but I'm going to be very radical. Yes, read. In those days, Ezekiel was sick and near death. And also, when you sleep, you are saying, I'm boring. You are saying you are not receiving anything. How do you think I'm feeling? I've prayed for this message. I've prayed that it changes your life. And then you come and sleep here. Are you undermining me or are you undermining the God who said? It's all. Unless last night you did not sleep because you were praying, then I understand. But if you did not sleep because you have been tormented, then that is the reason that you must wake up. Isaiah the prophet, yes. the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, yes. set your house in order. Say, set your house in order. That also, you see, uh, we talked about the earth. Now the Bible is exposing that even his own house was not in order. Even his own house. Listen, this man is a king of a nation. The nation is weak. The family, his own personal family is also weak. God says, set your house in order. Okay, we saw that God helped him to overcome Sennacherib, amen, and the Syrian army. Okay, but now the angel of the Lord comes also, uh, the man of God comes also to say your house is not in order and you're about to die. Set your house in order, amen. Set your house in order. He says, set your house in order, yes. That says the Lord. That says the Lord, yes. Set your house in order, for you shall die and not be. Hey, imagine. Huh? Imagine. The, Psalms, the, the book of Psalms says, I shall not die, but live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. But now a messenger comes. Huh? A messenger comes and says, opposite to what the book of Psalms is saying. He says, you shall die and not live. Imagine receiving a prophecy like that. Hey, say, oh Lord, may I not receive a prophecy like that? Ha, no, say, not anytime soon. Or do you want to die soon? Maybe can not go hatella. Maybe can not go stop on when I work out am I? Eh? But who, who do you think is going to bury you if you die now? I am saying that there is no death in this house. So you are not going anywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, no one will kill himself in this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Your children will never kill themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Death is not our portion in this house in the name of Jesus. We claim the life of Christ over this house and every member of this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Verse 2. Yeah. 
Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall yeah. and prayed to the Lord. He turned his face towards the wall. Amen, Basalon. He turned his face towards the wall and he did what? He prayed to the Lord. Amen, Basalon. He prayed to, to the Lord. Amen, Basalon. So he did not reject. He did not reject the prophecy of the man of God. He did not despise the prophecy of the man of God. He did not even look down on the man of God. He did not ridicule the man of God. But he cheerfully and respectfully took the prophecy. But he knew how to handle that prophecy. Amen, Basalwan. I believe that King Hezekiah had understanding of spiritual principles. He knew that a prophet will not speak unless God has sent him to speak. And he knew that Isaiah was a senior prophet in their nation. So meaning, whatever word that comes out of Isaiah was directly from God. Meaning, Isaiah, Hezekiah took Isaiah as if God is the one who is speaking to him. That's why Hezekiah did not address uh, Isaiah. He addressed, the, he addressed the call to send Isaiah. He took Isaiah, he looked beyond the physical realm of Isaiah. And he went into the spiritual realm. That's why he turned. The Bible said, says he turned his face and he turned his he turned his back and faced the wall. Amen, Basalwan. This is what? This is a hopeless situation. If God says something about your life, you must know that it is ultimate. If God says you are going to die, there's nothing that you will do, Basalwan. There's no there, there's there's nothing that you can do. And also, Isaiah Hezekiah understood one thing he knew that if it is god who says i'm going to die even isaiah cannot change the mind of god even isaiah cannot change the mind of god hallelujah he understood that you know what i have great respect for prophets of god amen because the bible says god does nothing without revealing it to his servants the prophet he knew also that if i honor the prophet in the name of a prophet he will receive the same reward of a prophet he knew that you know what if i honor a prophet i will I, I, I will i will succeed amen so he had great honor for a prophet that's why but in return what he did he took the report and he took the report to the person he knew that isaiah was a messenger amen Basalwan. he was a postman so he was a postman and the one who was responsible for him was in the headquarters. So when he faced against the wall, amen, he was not actually despising him, Hotamaya. He was actually going into the head office to say, Lord, I have received the report. Here is the report. I hear that you have sent your messenger, that I'm going to die. And remember the Bible says Hezekiah was, in the, was going through a sickness in his body. And then and you, you went through this sickness for many years and this sickness is the one that was about to kill him so now he has a report that this sickness there's no healing for this sickness the only remedy for this sickness is death he says ah as young as i am remember what was the first message fix your affairs fix your home he says ah, as young as i am lord i've run your nation very well and i've seen your power over your nation Yes, I might have weaknesses in my family, but when it came to your thing, my, my people have not served any, any foreign god. They have served only you. Because of the account of my weaknesses, should I die? If I die now, I'm going to die as a weak man. If I die now, I'm going to die as a, as, as a failed husband. If I die now, I'm going, to file, I'm going to die as a failed father. You cannot allow me to die now. You cannot allow me to die now. I still have a long life ahead of me. There are still certain things that I must conquer. There are battles that I must conquer. There are places that I must achieve. There are success that I must obtain. I want to see my children growing up. I want to see them getting married. I want to see them graduating. Lord, yes, there is sickness in my body, but there is hope in you. There is sickness in my body, but there is healing in your presence. That's why he turned his face and focus on god he took the report amen and he did not tell the man of god but why would god do this to me why after i've done all this for god ah 
He did not murmur before the he did not murmur before the prophet of God. He did not complain before the prophet of God. He was not in before in despair before the prophet of God. I believe that the prophet of God did not even hear. Oh, he did not even hear the prayer of the man of God because after he delivered the message, the Bible is telling us that he went out. While he was going out, the man of God was in the secret place. He was in the secret place begging for his life. He says, Lord, I know you are my maker. I know that you know every part in my body. I know that there's a spare part about this sickness that is in my body. I know that you can give me new kidneys. I know that you can give me new lungs. I know that you can give me a new heart. I know that you can give me a new, a new womb, Lord. I know because why? You are the one who created me. He knew that a designer, every time when they design something, they always have their spare part. A designer will never design anything without a spare part. And then also Isaiah, I, Hezekiah looked at the trees according to the book of Job. He says, even though you cut a tree and it falls down, there's a hope for that tree. He says, Lord, if there's a, if there's a hope for a tree that has been cut down, what more about me made in your image and likeness? He says, Lord, surely there's hope for me. Surely, Father, that I can come out of this situation. What are people going to say if I die now? What are people going to say about my children and my wife if I die now? I'm going to, I'm going to die in shame and disgrace. If you are saying, Lord, do something. Hmm? He, he touched the corridors of heaven. The Bible does not say, uh, Isaiah started crying to man of God. Man of God, please pray God for me. He did not say, who is the best physician here? The same way that we do nowadays. When we go through stuff, we don't handle situation like Isaiah. Every time when God gives you a report, you run to people about that report. You run to your neighbors about that report. You run to financial institution about that report. You don't go to the one who sent that report. That's why when you run there to people, when you run to institution, when you run everywhere, they don't have answer to that situation. Because in their trade, the only situation, the only solution is only towards their problem. When uh, your, 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 your situation, your solution is only in the tray of God. It's only found in the presence of God. That's why you'll run everywhere. When you come out, you come out being disgraced. You are, you, you are now, now disgraced. Why did I even run to that person? Why did I even run to that place? Look now, I've made my situation worse. Hmm? And listen, Ezekiel is giving us a simple method of handling a hopeless situation. A very simple method. He says you don't have to run everywhere. You don't have to run everywhere. Wherever you are, remember your heart is a secret place. Your heart is a dwelling place for the presence of God. Huh? We are talking about your heart. We are not talking about a place, a sanctuary. But we are talking about the heart. God is not very far that you should search for him. Eh? That you should climb ships for him. That you should climb aeroplanes for him. God is next to you. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that's how far God is, Basalwan. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, if you just confess, Amen. I said, you know, the Holy Spirit was saying to me when he was telling me this message that you see, weakness, weakness can either create hopeless, hopelessness or hopefulness. Weakness can create that. If weakness can create hopelessness or it can create what? Hopefulness. It depends on how you handle a weakness. A weakness, Basalwani, given to God, it will create hope. A weakness that is submitted to God, your situation submitted to God, he says in the book of uh, uh, First Peter, cast all your, not some, eh? not some again, but what? What is all? Everything in exception of nothing. He says, cast them unto God. Why? Because he cares. Because he do what? He cares. Amen. One time I spoke a message about what to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when you don't know. 
what to do anymore meaning when now you are in the when now you are in the crossroad and you don't know which direction to take you don't know whether to go right or whether to go left you don't know whether to go forward or whether to go back that is a point where you don't go anywhere you remain where you are you close your eye you open your heart and you seek the presence of god huh? because god says in the book of Psalms, he says be still be still and know that i am god meaning if now you are going to be confused if now you are going to be confused whether you go there whether you go there you are not still your your, your spirit is everywhere you are not going to find direction from the holy spirit you are a disturbed water remember we spoke about the disturbed water that a, a disturbed water you cannot see any, your image but any still water it can be a mirror to you but the minute you put your finger you have disturbed that water so the minute you are in the crossroad what you do with that weakness you submit it to god you quote jeremiah 29 verse 11, jeremiah 33 verse 3 that lord you said i must call unto you and you will answer me lord i'm calling unto you i'm not calling unto my father i'm not calling unto my father my mother i am not calling unto my uncle i am not calling unto my boss i am not calling unto medical professionals but lord i'm calling unto you you say it in your word lord that i must call unto you you will answer me you say it when i call unto you you will answer and you did not only end there you said you will show me great and mighty things meaning you will give me direction you will give you will show me direction and then you say it in the book of isaiah you say it when we are confused you i will hear the voice behind saying this is the way which you should go walking in it hallelujah only when you are still in the presence of god when you don't know anymore what to do you have tried everything Basalwan. you have tried everything you have put all your effort like the woman with the issue of blood huh? i believe that isaiah was a king he had the greatest physician ever i believe that they tried to heal their king because their king was a loving king their king was a generous king they did not want their king to die but the king the king had weakness that was beyond control of humans your situation the reason why it's not changing it is because it is beyond the help of human the reason why there is no one who's coming to assist you the reason why there's no one who's coming to take you out it is because your your situation is not physical child of god your situation is in the spiritual only the spiritual realm can solve your case only when you call unto the lord hallelujah this is what ezekiel was saying here amen you know when you continue with the scripture you realize also why god will say okay i will add yes unto you you realize why he says after after god comes and he says i will add unto you Ezekiel started now living in the presence of god every day hmm? started living in the presence of, of god every day i love one of the songs that he says he says even she all cannot praise you he says there's no worship in the place of the dead he say what is the point of you taking me because you created me to worship you i am alive i'm worshiping you i'm alive i'm praising you if i die my bones cannot worship you if i die my bones my flesh cannot praise you he says make me alive so that i can offer you worship make me alive so that i can praise you every day make me alive so that i can tell you how good you are so that i can tell people that there is no god above my god there is no god who is above who is greater than my god he says make me alive so that i can declare your glory in the land of the living because when i'm dead i cannot tell people about your glory when i'm dead i cannot tell people that you are jehovah rafa you are god who healed all my sickness you are god who healed all my disease he says only when i'm alive that people will know that you are rafa only when i'm alive people will know that you are Zikon, that you are god of the heavenly army because they have seen your power you delivered us from a great mighty army we saw your outstretched arm we know that you are a god who is great in battles why because we saw when our army was weak you became you brought your army from above and it helped us 
The Bible says, when God overcame their army, he overcame them at night. While they were sleeping, the Bible says, angel of death came over the Syrian army. It killed everyone. It killed about 85,000 soldiers. Eh? At night, when they woke up, when they woke up, they woke up to the army dead everywhere. And then this king started being afraid. He fled. He did not realize that he's going to his own house to be killed by his own son. You know why he ridiculed a child of God who was in a hopeless situation, but his hope was in Jehovah. Let your hope be in Jehovah. My hope is always in God. My hope is always in God. You see, this message is not only for you. This message is also for myself. That I know that I will come out. I know that the people of God will come out. No matter how dark your situation can be. No matter, Basalwani, even if you don't see an answer. You have never seen answer in your family. You have never seen answer in your siblings. Answer is there and it's available for you. When you are not like them. When you are a peculiar nation. Amen, Basalwani. You are a royal priesthood. There's answer for you in the table of God. There's your healing for you in the table of God. There's a breakthrough for you in the table of God. Only when you close your eyes in the physical. Only when you turn your face and focus on God. Give your report to God. Don't give it to men. Give it to God that, Lord, yes, I hear what you are saying. It's true that I've got sickness in my body. It's true that right now I am weak. But it's also true that you are the God who heals. It's also true that you are the God who owns silver and gold. You know what is our problem? As children of God, this is what God was saying to me. Our problem is that, Rona, we are, we are now religious too much. That's why I decided, I, I, I decided, I submitted, I submitted my resignation. I submitted my resignation of being Mzalwan. I said, I'm no longer Mzalwan anymore. I'm a Christ-like going forward. Because because Mzalwan is too religious. Mzalwani, Mzalwani has mastered to, you know, this is what the Holy Spirit was saying. Bazalwani have mastered to play church, but they have not mastered to act like Christ. That's why I, I, I submitted the, the early hours of this morning. I submitted my resignation as Mzalwan. Because I can So I can see Huh? So that's why, kill, that's why sometimes we follow things that we don't understand. Huh? That's why, oh, because of Bazalwan. That's why from today I'm no longer Mzalwan. I want to be like Christ going forward. Will I resign today? Will I resign September 2022, 2021? He offered his resignation. He says he's Christ like. Ah, Basalwan. Basalwan, we are we we have mastered to play church. We have mastered to register. Kalbona na na kilbon. Luna hantle hantle la nyata. Kalbona la like na modin tonza lumomo. Abatu abatu shebella Facebook. Wabona auto maka register. Maga shebella message. Good morning and win today. Hey, Hey, Tell your neighbor, you still am Zalwan. Be a proper Mzalwan. Be a right Mzalwan. Please, Mzalwan. Amen. Be a proper Mzalwan. Be a right Mzalwan. Let's not play church anymore. The reason why we don't see the weight, the reason why our, our situation are, are, are mounting up and they are not coming down. Where is the God of Zerubbabel who melted mountain like wax? Where is that God who said to Zerubbabel, you see this mountain that you see today, you shall see it no more. Where is that God today? You know where is that God? He is ready to act on our behalf. Only also when we act on behalf of the weight. Nowadays, we don't, nowadays we don't act on the weight anymore. Amen, Basalwan. We don't act on the weight anymore. 
Amen. Basalwan. We act on religion. We act on behaving as if we are Christians. We need to do introspection. Am I really a Christian now? Or am I doing this just to so that people can see? Check your prayer life. Am I still a Christian now? Check how you behave, Basalwan. Check the things that you do. Am I doing them for God? Or am I doing them for exposure? I must check myself. Why am I preaching? Am I preaching so that I can be well known? Or am I preaching because I love God and his people? I want to see them be, being delivered. I want to see chains being broken over their life. I want to see them being healed over every sick, sickness and disease. Why am I preaching this gospel? Why am I driving all the way from Gauteng to Rustenburg? Am I doing this out of pretense? Am I doing this out of norm? Or do I still love my God? Huh? Do I still seek his kingdom and his righteousness first? Hmm? Why am I holding a camera and taking photos? Am I doing so that apostle can see me? Why am I playing piano, holding computers? Why am I wearing a uniform of ushers? Do I want the world to see me or do I want the kingdom of God to see me? Do I want to be acknowledged by God or do I want to be acknowledged by men? We need to go back to the root. We say we want a God of the olden days. A God who answered by fire. A God who answered immediately. The God of Isaiah. That even before you speak, I have heard you. Do you know what provoked God to be like that? It was because of their heart for him. These were people who were not compromising when it came to the things of God. They, were not, they will never compromise their faith in God. Eh, ask them, check the Bible. Someone, rather destroy his own mother-in-law for, for the sake of his relationship with God. They did not care about their kingdom. Check Joshua. He says, I don't care whether God gave, gave, gave you to me or not. I don't care whether I'm your leader or not. If you're not going to follow my God, I'd rather surrender this kingdom. But as for me and my family, we will follow God. He says, you nation of Israel, you don't matter as much as God matters in my life. To what extent? To what extent of sacrifice are we ready to make just to serve God? Hmm? If we say we want God of Daniel, check the behavior of Daniel. If we say we want God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, check their behavior. People who refuse, Basalwani, to be identified by the world. They say, King, we see all your delicacy. We see all your nice things. He says, but Rona, we don't live according to what we see. He says, eat. Give them, to, give them to other servants. He says, we will live according to the standard of the weight. We will live according to the standard of the weight. And then you see when they were on fire, that the weight started manifesting in their midst. Jesus is not Jesus only in the New Testament. Jesus was alive even in the Old Testament. Eh? Look at the Bo 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 David. You say you want God. You want to be the apple of God's heart. Look at the attitude of David. Every time when he falls, he will go down and repent. You will go down and repent sincerely. He says, create in me, O Lord, a clean heart. He says, wash me, Father. Wash me and create in me a clean heart. And then he will beg God. He says, do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take away your holy... These are people who are serious about their God. Huh? People who are serious, meaning their relationship with God was more important than the, than the ministry. Than the, you know, my father says, we are called to work with God and assigned for ministry. But nowadays it's like we are called for ministry and assigned to work with God. No, that's not how it is, child of God. We are called to daily work with God. We are called to work with God every second. We are called to be living in the presence of God every second. Look at Ezekiel. It exposes his situation. Your situation will always expose you, child of God. Who are you working with? If you are going to cry whenever you face situation, then you have exposed your heart. So it exposed his heart that this man was a man after God. This man was a man who knew his God. That's why in the midst of a hopeless situation, he knows that there is somewhere where hope comes from. He knows that his hope is God. His hope is only God. Your only hope, let me tell you something, child of God. Your only hope in a hopeless situation is one, is God. Read Matthew 11 verse 38. Matthew 11 
verse 28 okay maybe hold that one and then write also write also um, James 5 verses 13 jump judge no it's Matthew 11 verse 28 not 38 go right now just go quickly man of God to uh, Psalms 34 verses 17 Matthew 11 verse 28 28 and then uh, Psalms 34 verses 17 Psalms 34 verse 17, 17 yes listen to this scripture uh, this message I know is speaking to someone if it is not speaking to you, take it as a currency. This is faith. Take it as a currency. Save it in your spiritual life so that when you face a hopeless situation, then you can always withdraw. You can always know what to do in those hopeless situations. Amen. Remember, hopeless situations come in different form. Your child right now might be going through a hopeless situation. Your marriage can be going through a hopeless situation. Your career might seem hopeless right now. Or even your business might seem hopeless right now. Our only hope is in God. Our only hope is in Jesus. Read man of God. Psalm 34 verse 17. Yes. The righteous cry out. The righteous do what? Cry out. The righteous do what? Cry out. Do you see Bas Basalwani that it's not a sin for a righteous to cry? Yes. Huh? It's not a sin for a righteous to cry. It's not a sin for a righteous to be weak. God knows that being righteous does not eliminate you from weaknesses. God knows that being righteous does not minus you from going through season in life. The Bible says the righteous also cry. I also cry. You know my story. I cried when I lost my baby. I cried when I lost my sister. I cry when I go through certain things. But I know how to cry. And I know whom to cry to. Amen. How you cry also determine how you will come out. Tell your neighbor how you cry, how you cry. will determine how you come out. Amen. Yes. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears. And, and the Lord do what? Yes. And the Lord do what? Yes. Say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank for you. always hearing me. For always hearing whenever, me. I whenever I cry. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank that you always hear me. That you always hear whenever, me. I whenever I cry. Remember, crying is different. There are people, Bazalwan, you'll never see tears coming out of their eyes. But tears are rolling in their heart. There are people, they will always cry from outside. Our cry are not the same. Amen, Basalwan. Remember Moses, he said, why are you crying out? Amen. On the outside, he was not crying. But within, he was crying. That's why God says, why are you crying out to me, Moses? But no one saw Moses crying out. But within, he was crying. Our cry are not the same. Right now, we are seated this way. Some are crying within. When I was born, when I was smiled, Amen, Basalwan. But you don't know what is taking place inside. Inside, there are, there are buckets of tears. That, Lord, when are you coming through for me? Lord, I've been a Christian from every, when I was young. I've denied myself youthful pleasures. I did not go where other youth were going, but I was always going into your presence. But it seems like you always pass me by. It seems like you don't care about me. It seems like you don't hear my prayer. They are crying within, but without, they are always encouraging others. They are always lifting up others, but Bona, no one is lifting them up. Oh Lord, when are you bringing support for me? Support will come. Help will come from above. Amen, Amen Basalwani. I say help will come from above. You will never die like Lazarus. You will never die with sickness. You will never die poor. You will never die empty child of God. The Bible says God hears. Meaning God is interested in answering. If God is able to hear. It means that he's concerned. He wants to answer. How are people going to know that I've got a God. If he's not going to answer me. If he's not going to manifest himself in my life. The only way that they will know that I'm working with him is only when he manifests himself in my life. I know that Holy Spirit is speaking to someone right now. Holy Spirit is touching a situation of someone right now. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Lord delivers them out of ah, all their... Not only does God hear, he delivers them from what? From all of their troubles. Ah, repeat it again. From all? From out of all their troubles. Out of what? All their troubles. Say, oh Lord, I know I've got a help. Say, from today, I know I've got help. God is my helper. 
He hears my prayers. And he promised to deliver me. Even from this situation. From this problem. From this trouble. That I'm currently going through now. Say I know I'm coming out. Because God cares for me. God hears my prayer. God has power to deliver me. He will deliver me today. He will deliver my marriage today. He will deliver my family today. My children will be delivered. Wabona, today, if you can say this thing as a child of God, not as a Mzalwan, I promise you, you are coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you are coming out. Because God is ready to hear your prayer. Remember, God does not only hear what you say. He hears more what you say with your heart. Amen. So, what you say with your heart is more important, more than what you say with your mouth. So, say it like a child of God. Say it knowing that God is your father. Say it knowing that God loves you. Say it knowing that God is concerned about you. He cares about you. Say it that I am coming out because I'm a child of God. I am coming out because God cares for me. I am coming out because God died for me. I am coming out because God is alive for me. I am coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, someone you are coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Your marriage is coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Your business is coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Your wife, your husbands are coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Let God meet us at the, at the point of our need in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let God be true and the devil a liar. I say let God be true and the devil a liar. Let God be true and our situation a liar. He deliver us from all. I love my God. Oh. I, he says from all. He says from all. He says from all. He says God is ready to deliver you. He has an escape plan for you. He has a deliverance plan for you. He has a rescue plan for every situation that you are going to encounter. Hmm? Sister Fifi, you see you are not yet married. So you don't know the challenges that you are going to face in marriage. And you are going to face those challenges in marriage. But be of good cheer that every challenge that you are going to go through, already God has a delivering plan for you. He has a, an escape plan for you. Hmm? Imagine, God is ready to deliver us even today. He wants us to call upon him. Yes, finish it, man of God. Verse 18. Mm. The Lord is near to those who have a broken ah, heart. The Lord is where? He's near. Does it say he's far? No. Come, mama, mama, far. Come. Okay, wait there. If she's there, she's far, Akira. Hmm? If she's there, she's far, ne? Okay, come closer. She is near, Akira. So the Bible says, God is not there. God is not there that he cannot hear your prayer. But God is here. Come. God is here. So that he can even hear the prayer that you don't shout. Yeah. Eh? The prayer that you don't shout. Remember Sarah. Remember Sarah. He thought that God was very far. And then she, she started laughing in her heart. The Bible says she started laughing in her heart. And then the Bible says, and I believe that even Abraham did not hear Sarah laughing. Angel of God did not hear Sarah laughing. Amen. It was God who heard. He says, your wife Sarah is laughing. You know why? Because God is close. God is near to the broken hearted. Every time you are weak, you must know that God is near and he can hear even the pain that you don't utter with your weight. He can hear even the secret prayers that you don't say with your own weight. The Bible says he is near to the broken hearted. He is near to the discouraged. He is near to those who are in despair so that he can be ready to lift them up. So that he can be ready to pull them out. So that he can be ready to see them through. Hallelujah. Your God is near to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are solving this thing wrong way. You run away. And when God is just near to you. God is here, near to you. God is close to you. As I'm speaking to you right now. God is just next to you. Not even next to you. God is inside your heart. Right inside your heart. 
Your heart is the arena of liberty. Eh? Your heart is synagogue, church of all nations. Eh? Your heart, your heart, Basalwan. Your heart is a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Angels of God, you see how small your heart is, but it is so big to hold the presence of God inside. Ah. Say, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. He loves us. He loves us so much. In the hopeless situation, he is our home. Huh? Imagine, I've heard people saying that, hey, this person is a hopeless situation. He's a hopeless case. That is sad. Meaning they don't see this person becoming something in life. Hey, some people, they've seen, they've, looked, they've watched their situation, and they say, my situation is a hopeless case. They say, you are a hopeless situation going through a hopeless case. Ah, let me tell you something. Hopelessness only operates in the physical. God does not know anything about hopelessness. Hopelessness is not anywhere in the dictionary of God. Did you get that? Hopelessness is nowhere in the dictionary of God. Amen. Hopelessness cannot be found in heaven. Hopelessness is only things that men say with their mouth. Amen. So, that's why you cannot address God and then be hopeless. Because when you pray, okay, we'll come to that one. Finish that one first. Verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart yeah. and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Contrite spirit. Amen. Yeah, contrite spirit. Meaning those who are discouraged, those who are in despair. Amen. So now go to Matthew 11 verses 28. We are about to come to the closure. It's Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Verse 28. Yeah. Come to me, all you who labor. Wahupula, I, Wahupula, and Choi, the Psalms 37, verses 11. What did it say? It says, you still remember? It says what? Okay, just read it again. Man of God, very quickly, don't close there. Psalm 34, verse 70. Yeah, oh, sorry, yes, yes. The righteous cry out. Number one, the righteous cry out. Number two, we go to Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Yes. Come to me. Number two, we come to who? Read it, read it. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Are heavy laden. Amen. Number one to God, meaning we make our case known to God, not to men. Ezekiel did not tell this man of God. Amen. He did not run to his man of God. He first ran away to God. Amen. Number two, it says, we come to God. Amen. He says, those who are heavy laden, those who are heavy laden, amen, who are weary and heavy laden. Amen. Yes. And I will give you rest. He says, I will give you rest, meaning it is in the interest of God that we experience rest even when we go through hopeless situation. Even when we go through turmoils, when we go through trials, when we go through tribulation, when storms are hitting all directions, God wants to give us rest. Hmm? He is shalom, remember. The God, our peace. Amen, Basalwan. So he wants us to experience. He's not saying I'm going to take them away because God needs this situation to refine our character. Amen. We are not going to grow if we are not going to go. Amen, Basalwan. Because we grow, we, we grow through all those things. Amen. So God is not going to kill them. Amen, Basalwan. Otherwise, if God is going to kill, if God is going to remove them, then it means that God is going to remove color in our life. Our color is not, our life is not going to be beautiful. Amen. You remember Joseph with the garment of many colors. Yes. But those colors, what did they represent? They represented every situation he was going to go through for him to be seated at that king, at that place of high prestige and honor. Amen, Basalwan. Yes. Those colors represented the pit. It represented Potiphar's wife, uh, challenges and uh, temptation. It represented the prison. Amen, Basalwan. So he had to go through, but God was always with him. God is always with us. Right now, you thought that you were weak. You thought that you don't have strength. But every day you are waking up, you are overcoming. Eh? This is not according to your own power. 
It means that there's a force, there's a power that is behind you. Amen, Basalwan. God is interested in solving our case. It shows even here that God is interested. Huh? Isaiah 34 tells us that God is interested in delivering us. Amen, Basalwan. Only when we come to him, only when we call upon him. So if you're not going to do this, if you don't call unto God, and if you don't come to Jesus, you are not going to get help. And if you are not going to get help, you will remain hopelessness. You will remain in, uh, your situation will, remo will remain hopeless. Amen, Basalwan. Yes. Uh, now let's jump, go to James 5. Is it 13? James 5 verses 13. Read for us there. Yeah, James 5 verses 13. James 5 verses 13. Strength to overcome. Turning our hopeless situation around. Yes. James chapter 5 verse 13. Yeah. Is anyone among you suffering? Yeah, listen to this. Is anyone amongst you suffering? Eh? Let him pray. Ah, let him do what? Let him what pray. Did, what did Hezekiah do, Basalwan? I am asking, what did Hezekiah do? He prayed. Amen. What does the Bible say? James 5 verses 13, what does it say? Is anyone amongst you? Eh? Lena, right now, I told you that before I came here, I was praying. I was praying for you and I was praying for myself as well. I was praying for my family. I was praying for everything. There is power in prayer. Tell your, tell your neighbor there is power in prayer. That's why Satan, one of the areas that Satan attacks in a Christian life, it's, it's our prayer life. He knows that the minute I kill their prayer life, then I am succeeding in making them backslide. The way of backsliding, by, the way to backslide, Basalwan, is by stopping to pray. Satan knows that for as long as you are prayerful, he knows that you will always be hopeful. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I say? As long as you are prayerful, I will always be hopeful. Say it. For as long as I'm prayerful, I will always be hopeful. As long as I'm prayerful, I will always be hopeful. Say, oh Lord, grant me the grace to pray without ceasing. Say, oh Lord, grant me a mental of praying without ceasing. Say, Lord, grant me a mental of praying without ceasing. Grant me a mental of praying in good times and in hard times. Say, oh Lord, grant me a mental that will enable me to pray and not give up. Yes, it's anyone amongst you facing trouble. Pray, number, first thing to do, do what Ezekiel did. Amen. When you go through trouble, first thing to do is what? Do what Ezekiel did. Pray. Amen. And then God is the one who will send the man of God back. God did not answer Ezekiel. Do you, you remember? It was the man of God who came back again. And said the same God that said, you are going to die. He's the same God who says you are going to live. So you are always going to need your man of God. Do you hear what I say? You are always going to need your man of God. Amen, Basalwan. So I'm not refuting that. But what is important, man of God comes. When did man of God come? He came after Ezekiel prayed. So when now you want to go to man of God before you pray, that's why there's no answer. <laughs> hey, don't be jealous. Hmm? I, that was a powerful point. Eh? You run to man of God first before you pray. Aye, that is not the biblical, that is not the biblical way of solving problem. The biblical way of solving problem is what? You pray before you go to man of God. Hallelujah. Say, oh Lord, help me to pray first. Yeah, pray first. Before you wake up, pray first. Amen. Pray first. Hallelujah. Before you wake up, you know, the, the secret to having a successful day is when you pray. Amen. Prayer will enable you to overcome every challenge of the day. Amen, Basalwan. Pray first. Don't complain first. Don't mama first. Don't go to Facebook first. Don't go to WhatsApp first. Go to God first. Connect with God first. Link up with God first. Make sure that when you come out of your bed, 
before you even say hi to your baby or your wife or your children make sure that you have said good morning to god first because it is a god who have given you that good morning amen Basalwan. yes it says anyone amongst okay we, okay we saw that point number three number one we said uh, i according to uh, uh psalm 34 verses 17 again it. it says what we the righteous do what they cry to god amen you cry god is not against you crying but you cry to god even when you read about the Zekiah, the bible says he cried to god amen Basalwan. number two according to matthew 11 verses the uh, matthew 11 verses 23 you come to god amen with all that cry with all that pain you do what you come to god point number three according to james 5 verse 13 pray amen basalwan pray amen and then also number three second corinthians 12 verses 9 second corinthians this is our second last point and then we are done corinthians chapter 3 Yes. Verse 9. Yeah. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Is that Second Corinthians? Yes, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, 12. Verse 9. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Yeah. And he said to me, and he said to me, yes, my grace is sufficient for you. What? My grace is sufficient for you. Yes. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength, God's strength is made perfect where? In, in my weakness. weakness. God's strength is made what? Perfect in God's weakness. Amen. Always know, Basala, in whatever that you face, you must always know that the grace of God is sufficient for you. All you need is the grace of God. Say, tell your neighbor, all you need in every hopeless situation is the grace of God. Tell the other neighbor, the grace of God is sufficient to turn all your weaknesses into God's strength. Say to yourself, the grace of God is sufficient to cover my weakness and turn them into God's strength. Say, the grace of God is sufficient to turn all my weaknesses into God's strength. Always know that. The grace of God will always be sufficient for me. I will not run out of the grace of God. The Bible says, His mercy I knew every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Amen, Basalwan. You must always know that the grace of God is forever sufficient for you. Say it. Say the grace of God is always sufficient for me. Is sufficient for my family. Is sufficient for my marriage. The grace of God is sufficient for my children. Is sufficient for my business. The grace of God is sufficient. Say for as long as I'm alive. As long as I experience weakness. I know who to turn to. I know what to do. God is my helper. God is my helper. His strength is always made manifested in my weaknesses. Number last, always remain, always know that faith is a tool that overcomes. Faith is a tool that overcomes all fears. Faith is a tool that overcomes all fears. Amen. Amen. So those are the things that I want us to live by. That I want us to hold on to in the midst of challenging situation. Amen, Bazalwan. Yes. Number one, when you go through hopeless situation, the Bible says God is ready to hear your prayer. And God is not against you crying, but cry unto God, child of God. Number two, Jesus has an invite that is always open. You know, that's why the doors of the church are always open and not closed. Even during winter, they are always open, not closed. They represent the heart of Jesus. That the heart of Jesus 
is always open for us. No matter how weak you can be, no matter the type of sinner you can be, the heart of Jesus is always open for us. Amen, Basalwan. The heart of Jesus is always open for us. I said number three, that our hearts are a prayer room. This is where we tell God all our weaknesses. This is where we tell God all our challenges, our despair. Amen. Number four, we said his grace is sufficient to cover for all our weaknesses. His grace is sufficient to meet us at the point of our weaknesses. Number four, always know that the remedy to overcome all fears is faith. The remedy to overcome all fears is what? Faith. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, help my faith in you. Never to fail. Never to fail. Let's fail. rise in the name of Jesus Christ. Have we learned something today? No, I'm, 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 I'm talking to people. Have we learned something today? Let's rise in the name of Jesus Christ. Bazalwani, let me teach you something. Let me teach you something. Sit down, just one minute. Sit down one minute. Late, and I want you to say this. Say it and follow me. Say late obedience is disobedience. Amen. Always know that. When a man of God says, rise, why do you sleep? Why are you tired? You are shook up your spiritual life. It's like you are also tired spiritually. Amen. It also shows the level of your obedience. It's like when you are always slow every time when God speaks to you. Be mindful of small things. You know how, how you are going to master to know God in big things is when you learn to obey God in small things. Learn to obey God in small things like obeying. Obeying. Amen, Basalwan. Obedience comes in different ways. I say rise, but I only see every time I say rise, you find that whereas they are strong. And then you find they rise as if they don't want. Don't ever do God a favor. You need a favor of God. So if you need a favor of God, be a servant of God. Be a custodian of God. Be a prisoner of God. You know, a prisoner does not have control over themselves. They are controlled as they are told. So be a prisoner of the Holy Spirit. Always obey him. That's the way to success. Obedience. You are where you are because of the level of your obedience. Amen. I just want to use this one. Let's rise in the name of Jesus. Let's rise. Say, oh Lord, I thank you for your word. Say, oh Lord, manifest your strength in all my weaknesses. Help my faith in you. Never to fail. Turn it into your own prayer. Lord, help my faith in you. Never to fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Help my faith in you. Never to fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Help my faith in you. Never to fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Help my faith in you, Lord. Never to fail in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh Lord. Help us not to fail you. Not to fail our faith, Lord. Help us, Lord. Not to fail you. And not to fail our faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Revelation Bazalwan is given to you directly from the mouth of God. You try to mess up with my generation, but you stop here.